So if you're here tonight and you say, man, I struggle closing, I lack confidence, I got leads in the pipeline, I don't know how to close them, I don't, I really need a formula, I don't know how to handle objection, then folks, tonight is for you. We're going to give away some of our secrets. We're also going to be talking about something we're doing this Friday, which is a three or four hour um, uh, boot camp that we're doing this Friday that we want you involved in where we give you the good stuff. Okay, this is a taste of the ice cream. On Friday, we're going to give you some of the good stuff. So, Cody, when you're thinking about closing, when you're thinking about closing, um, talk through your concept of closing because you've been in the insurance business for a while. How many insurance agents out there do you know that are great, are pretty good at selling, but they're very bad at closing? Majority, yeah, I would say about uh, probably about 97, 98 percent. So here's the deal. The people that make the most money, folks, have the guts to ask the question, if I could do this for you, like I have done it for all these other people, what would stop us from moving forward right now? It seems like you want to do this. It sounds like this is perfect. What would prohibit you from doing it right now? Okay. This is very uncomfortable because I wrote down in my notes, Cody, there's, there's a consideration here. I could get rejected. I could feel like I'm too aggressive. Okay. I could feel like they're going to laugh. I don't know what they're going to do to me. Okay. I don't, I don't know if it brings back memories of failure or rejection from the past when, when other kids laughed at you. I don't know, but I know that, that it's, it's, it's like asking another person for something and being, I watch my eight year old daughter. And, and when we go to a restaurant, she's like, daddy, ask him for this. And I'm like, no, you ask him. You need to learn to ask another person for something. Right. All they can do is tell you no. Okay. And once you get over this fear Fear is an unpleasant emotion created by a belief that something's going to harm you. Folks, they're not going to kill you. They're not going to hurt you. All they can do is say, look, I'm not interested. I don't want it. Lose my number. Okay. And I'll give one story. Then I'm going to let you take over, Cody. Is there, was a, there was a girl when I was in college named Summer Kirk that I wanted to go out with so bad I couldn't see straight. She was beautiful. Okay. And I was in class with her in college and I would talk to her, just barely talk to her. And then one night I got up enough guts to call her. And, and I'm like, I'm going to ask her on a date. And she picked up the phone. She said, hi, this is Summer. And I, and I was so scared, I hung up the phone. And I never, ever called her back. That's how scared I was. Folks, today I will ask anybody for anything, anytime. I have removed all consideration. A consideration is an internal fault that prohibits an external action. I have removed all that fear. Okay, so Cody, when you think about closing, let's get into the mechanics of it. Because here's the deal. I've got leads. Tonight's not about leads. I'm going to talk about how to generate leads on Friday at our boot camp. Okay. I'm going to talk about how to work, work a selling system on Friday. I'm going to talk about how to attack a day on Friday. I'm going to talk about how to prospect on Friday. Okay. And I've generated as many as 3000 leads in 90 days, really almost organically with very few ad dollars that I spend. So I know how to generate a lot of leads. Okay. But that ain't the problem. I could give you my database right now. Say here's 3000 people. Here's 10,000 people. Here's 20,000 people. Call and close them. You're going to have to initiate. You're going to have to disarm. You're going to have to locate a problem. You're going to have to offer a compelling solution. And, and the good ones, Cody, because I'm coaching like the number one door-to-door -door salesperson in the world right now. And that dude sits down across the table in a stranger's house and said, you're going to do something today you never thought you were going to do. And he gets them to sign like an $80,000 contract sitting at their kitchen table. It's, it's crazy. After a door knock, probably too. After right? a door knock. They're yeah. complete strangers, but he goes into it going, and he, and he tells them, when I leave, I'm not coming back. You're going to do this today. Like he just tells them. <laughs> and, they, and they're like, okay. Like, like it's crazy. Yeah. But the dude has confidence coming out of his ears. So let's, let's start breaking down closing tonight when you see it. Lead come in the door. Yep. Four steps of the sale, wherever how you do it. Person is indicated interest. Okay. Person is indicated interest. Now what, Cody? All right, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. Now, now what do you, how do you, how would you coach me to close people more? I love it. Yeah. And, and also I love that that, that, that dude, uh, is that Sam or is that a different guy? That's Michael O'Donnell, number Michael. one face-to-face -face door uh, salesperson in the world. Nice. Uh, I mean, I, I love that Michael is, is a lot, a lot of people are scared to say that stuff up front, by the way, you know, they're talking to a prospect. The last thing they want to say is you are doing business with me today. Right. Yeah. And, and it's like, it is, it goes back to a fear you know, and you've done it so much that there is no fear. And, and you talked about it for a second. And what I thought about it, what I wrote down was what Cardone talked about at a mastermind one time, which is, which is, which is, you know, a limiting belief that's getting in the way, you know, of, of, of us believing 
that, you know, we're, we're scared, right? We're afraid of rejection. Something's going to happen bad to us. And so because of that, we're not doing the things we need to do, you know? And I would say the biggest thing that insurance agents struggle with is, as I, you know, I'm about to go through some notes here, um, is they struggle with what to do once they get to the end, you know, because w- w- we can typically do a pretty good job. Like a lot of people are good at talking and building relationship and walking people through the solution, right. And, and kind of building everything and, and, and doing some trial closing along the way. And then we get to the end and we have a bad habit of, you know, Hey, what do you think? What do you want to do? Are you interested in this? You know, and asking a lot of stupid questions that, that actually remove confidence in the middle of the time when you need the most confidence, you know? And so I, I want to jump out and ask a question for everybody. It's all, we got 114 on zoom and then we got another 43 on Facebook right now. Um, I love that you live stream this from zoom, by the way, I went in and shared it out to a bunch of our groups. Um, I, I, I want to ask you guys for, for on, on a scale of one to 10, one being horrible, 10 being perfect um, on the topic we're talking about tonight at, at being a master closer. Where do you see yourself? Be honest. I'd love for you to throw an answer in chat or on Facebook Live in, in, in the comments. Where do you see yourself? You know, Tracy says a four, Brett says a six, Sidney says a five, seven, six, one, four, 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 two, two, six point six. There we go. I even got a decimal rolling. Um, three, four, eight. Thomas, that's solid, man. Uh, seven, three. And you see the reason why. Uh, and, and Phil says a lot of flirting, right? Even on Facebook, we got Cameron saying a nine, Jesse saying a six. Zach saying a seven, Edgardo saying a five, you know, like there, there's a lot of, when, when, when I do something like this and ask that question with, with teams and companies, I always get typically three to sevens, right? It's, it's all, it's all three to sevens. And the stuff that I'm going to go through here right now, and that coach is going to talk about, and we're going to go much more in depth than anything you hear tonight, by the way, on Friday. Okay. I posted the link a few minutes ago. Um, it's $97 right now. It's actually, it's, 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 it, it, it's, it's half off for you to spend an entire day with us on Friday. Okay. And, and we're going to go through deep an entire day. Right. And so I'm going to start out by asking you guys a few questions to do a live role play to show you what I do in sell scenarios. Okay. Now, my first question is, I want to ask you, are you satisfied with your results in 2020? Right. And it's okay to throw something in chat, right. On zoom, on Facebook live, et cetera. Are you satisfied? Are you true? Let's be honest with ourselves. Are we truly satisfied with our results in 2020? Right. And, and, and for majority, the answer is going to be no, you know, and that's okay, by the way. Okay. Now the next question, what is your target production goal, income goal, revenue goal for 2021? What does that look like for you? What do you want to happen? If you had to visualize the perfect freaking year in 2021, what would it come down to? What would you accomplish next year? right? Because let's go ahead and think ahead because it's already December, I don't know, 5th or 6th or whatever it is, right? So let's start to think about next year, okay? So now we're we're thinking about next year. We got a goal, okay? Now the next question is, do you believe paying $97 and spending an entire day with Coach and I will help you get closer to that goal? That's the real question. And if you don't think it's going to, you should not sign up and spend all day with us on Friday. But I can promise you, if you think even a little bit, even an ounce, that spending all day with freaking the super coach who travels the world and speaks and one of the top insurance guys in the world is going to get you closer to hitting the goals that you just mentioned, right? We already said we weren't satisfied with 2020. We already said, we already said here's what I want to do in 2021. If you believe an entire day with us this Friday in literally five days is going to be the difference and that you can take a nugget that is going to get you at least a little bit closer, then why wouldn't we sign up right now, right? Why would we not sign up right now? Because I can tell you when, when coach comes to me with an idea, right? Like, 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 like being a part of the cruise, uh, like joining the coaching program, like going to do a retreat, right? You can ask him. Um, I don't say, well, coach, let me think about it, man. I don't know, you know, and he's asked me for a lot more than 97 bucks before, you know? A lot more. And and what do I do? Honestly, how, how do I typically respond? Yeah, sounds good. Let's do it. That's it. That's it. And and the the, the, the real secret in this whole like top closing secrets tonight, um, we start talking about closing, man. You guys are getting me all worked out. Uh, the real reason why I answer that way, by the way, is I truly believe, I truly believe that how you buy things is how you will sell. And I truly believe that's a limiting belief for a lot of people, right? I just bought a 2021 Audi Q8 yesterday. 
um, all black, decked out everywhere, rims are black, everything else. And that's, that's the most expensive car I ever bought. I didn't even go to the lot. I didn't even test drive it. I'm like, Lauren, I want it, go get it. And then I went in yesterday and just signed the paperwork, right? What, why? Because if I expect other people to buy on the spot, not think about stuff, pull the trigger immediately, and we're doing business today, like you talked about Michael earlier, then I need to buy the same way, right? I was, I, I was, I was selling an 8% nation ticket to an insurance agent back in the summer of 2018. And he was from California, had, would have to come to Nashville. He was a new agent. And I said, hey, I offered him a ticket. He, he said, well, let me think about it. You know, let me call you back. Let me think about it. You know, which coach you, you probably get every now and then, right? As, as, as most of you guys do. And if you're, if you're watching right now, throw in chat if that's something you hear a lot from prospects, because I'm about to solve that problem for you, by the way. Okay, I'm about to solve that problem right now. So if you struggle with that, I want to think about it. I want you to call me back. I'm not sure. I can't do it now. Call me next Friday, whatever, whatever, whatever that means. The next Friday is going to be different. And I told this insurance agent, I said, hey, do you ever have prospects that tell you when you get to the end of the presentation that they want to think about it? Do you ever have prospects say that they want to call you back, that they don't want to make a decision today? And he said, yes. And, and, and do you end up getting a sale? No, I normally don't. I said, the biggest reason why, and this is going to hit home for a lot of you guys that are jumping on, by the way, the biggest reason why you're hearing that is because you tell it to other people. If I start telling coach, I'm going to think about stuff when he presents ideas to me, I'm going to allow, I'm going to end up hearing it more from prospects. Why? I don't hear it because I expect people to do business with me immediately. I do not believe in calling me back. I don't believe in thinking about it. If you ever heard of, um, if you ever listened to Brian Tracy's The Art of Closing the Sale, which is an amazing audio book, he talks about uh, training his sales team on the no callback close, which I'm going to go through on Friday, by the way, in great detail. And at the end of the day, I believe that I'm a master closer and I get people to do business with me immediately without thinking about stuff. Because that's exactly the way I buy. When you start buying that way, it, it instills confidence. And you start expecting others to buy the exact same way. I guarantee you when you bought that new Range Rover or a couple Range Rovers or whatever, or whatever you did, Coach, I guarantee you, you didn't take a few weeks to freaking think about it. I didn't even drive it. Exactly. I just, I just looked at it. I looked at it. And, I, and he said, Coach, you'd be a bad man when you pull up in this. And I said, draw, draw it up. Drop the paper. You're right. <laughs> You're right, man. And, and, and dude, you are a bad man rolling around that thing. I love that. That's a sharp, that's a sharp ride. Uh, so, so here's what I, I want to jump out and give the number one key right now. Okay. The number one key. And I just posted a link again, so you can spend time with some Friday. Cause I believe every single person on here will sign up and should sign up. Okay. Uh, Cause I can guarantee you the measly 97 bucks that you're spending right now will get you close to your goal next year. I can promise you that. Okay. The number one, I believe the number one key to closing more deals what do you guys think it is? Okay, th 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 throw it in chat, comments, etc. What, what do you think the number one key? What's up, John? Appreciate you being here. Thank you for signing up, buddy. Uh, what 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 do you believe the number one key to closing more deals is? Good confidence. Ask for the yes. Ask for it. Yeah, most people don't ask. Tell they don't, they, they don't they don't do anything. They just like let the person make the decision themselves, right? I really believe. No, don't accept excuses, confidence, mindset. I think somebody may have put it up above because they've probably heard me say it. I really believe the number one key to closing more deals is to expect them to buy every single time. If there's ever a time where you think they are not going to buy, I can promise you they're not going to. They're going to fill it from you. If there's ever an excuse that you think is okay for them to not buy from you right now, then guess what? There's going to be a lot of other excuses that are going to get in the way of you closing deals later. I really believe that if you start expecting them to buy every single time, they're more likely to do it. I believe that's my core. I've seen it to be true. And I can promise you it'll work for you, man. And Sean's right, man. It takes a lot of guts, a lot of guts. A lot of guts. And, and you guys are throwing a bunch of um, a bunch of C's out there, confidence, including one. I'm going to give you a little taste of what I'm going to talk about on Friday as well. And coach, you jump in, stop me, whatever, at any point. Okay. Um, 
I want to give uh, three C's real quick that I really believe will make a difference in you closing deals tomorrow before we even spend time diving in on Friday. Okay, the first one, the first one is, is care, care. The customer has to believe, right? Like Coach talked about the solution. You have the solution to the problem, right? They have to believe and they have to know that you deep down really do care about them and that you, you care about spending time solving that problem for them. The reason Coach does such an amazing job and why I love spending time with a dude and more time you spend with him, the more you see it. And I mean, who does as many freaking Facebook lives as that dude? You know, he's like, I'm, I'm trying to keep up and, and I'm exhausted. Okay. The dude cares, man. The dude cares as much as anybody I've ever seen. And you guys know he does, which is why you're here tonight. That's the first C, right? The customer, they have to know that you care deep down so much that the passion is exuding from you. Like he knows that you spend a year in his coaching program, right? That you are going to level up. Your income is going to go up, right? Because he's seen it for me and play hundreds, and if not thousands of other people, right? So at the end of the day, care always has to be a part of it. Because you, you're not, we're not really selling insurance, we're selling a passion, right? We're not really selling a product, we're selling a conviction, right? We're not really selling a service, we're selling enthusiasm that we know and we believe that we can help solve that problem for that person, right? So the first one's care. First one's care. The second one is confidence, like many of you have said. If you're not confident in your ability to get it done, if you're not confident in your product or service, whatever you're selling, if you're not confident that you are the best solution for them and you're not the best person that they should buy from in the world, because really when it comes to insurance specifically, they people can buy insurance, like Coach said earlier, from anyone, anyone ever. But how much do you believe and how confident are you in you what you're selling and your ability to get it done and to help solve their problem, right? That confidence, you have to exude that confidence so much that by the end, the person's like, holy freak, I don't need to talk to anybody else. I don't want to see anybody else ever again. I'm working with that dude, right? I'm, I'm working with that chick. Like I, it's over. I, I made my decision. It's so easy. They're more confident. They're more passionate than anybody else I've ever seen. Okay. So second one's confidence. And, 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 and Brett's right, man. If you're, if you're not confident, you're a con man. I love that. Uh, third, certainty. Certainty. I'm going to spend a lot of time talking through this, this specific psychology of this on Friday, by the way. Certainty. How certain are you that you are going to get the deal done for them? How certain are you that you are the best choice? And how certain are you that they are going to do business with you now? Not later, now because that makes all the difference in the world. It makes all the difference in the world. How certain are you that they're going to do it immediately? And once you start to exude that certainty, like I talked about last time on, on a scale of one to 10, right? If, 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 we, if I were to ask you, how certain are you that people are gonna buy from you when you're with them on a scale of one to 10, if you, if you throw it in chat, one being I'm not very certain, 10 being, I'm, dude, I'm freaking super certain, I'm super high, right? On a scale of one to 10, how certain are you the customer is going to be buying from you when you see them? Okay, let me explain something. If we've got this scale of one to 10 and you're an eight, okay, and you're an eight, the customer is never going to be as high as you are because they don't sell what you're selling, right? They, they, they probably don't believe in it as much as you do. But think about it though, if you're an eight and they're a six, well, what if you're a four? They're probably a two. But also the, the, the positive piece of this is as your certainty goes up, so does theirs along the way. The more certain you are that they are going to do business with you and the more certain you, and, and this doesn't have to be arrogance or ego or anything else, right? It can, it can still be humble. It can still be positive. It can still be confident. It can still be aggressive because at the end of the day, because I mean, you, you, you can just look, look at coach, no ego, no arrogance, incredibly humble, spends a ton of time with me and half the time, I don't even know why, you know, talk to me at 10 X from the front row after you spoke to 10,000 people, you know, why me? Right. But at the end of the day, the dude is certain. And I hope that you guys become certain as well, because I can promise you when you become certain and the customers feel it and they are more likely to do business with you immediately, immediately.
Now, let, let's talk about where that certainty comes from, because I think that is r really, really, I like the point about caring, and I like all three of those C's. And, and, but I, and I want to talk a little bit about where certainty comes from, because this is, this is something I learned. I, di I, I, didn't, I didn't really understand the cycle of where my certainty came from until my bud Tim's story uh, was talking about a cycle that people go through to, to do big things in their life. And, and I said, it's really how another one person sells another person. Remember the word close, bring two things together, your certainty, their insecurity, okay? Your confidence, their lack of confidence, okay? You, you can actually, uh, another person can borrow confidence from you when they're low on it, right? They don't, they, I mean, how many times has a person not wanted to do something and been talked into doing it? Then they said, man, it's the best thing I ever did. Now, here's my point. So Tim always talked about this cycle and, and he said, man, you teach it so good. I'm going to give it to you, coach. Just say it's yours. <laughs> and I said, good. The, 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 here, the big thing is this. Where does certainty come from? It comes from this cycle. You've had some big revelation. And the big revelation is some aha moment. Okay, for me, the reason I have such a certainty that a good coach can change your life is because if you ever heard me tell the story, six years old on a baseball field, a little league baseball coach who was a woman said to me, son, one of these days, you're going to be a great coach. That was a big revelation. Okay. Then, uh, then you have this period of time because of your revelation that you have a deep conviction. See, if you're new to sales, you don't have a lot of certainty because you haven't shown a demonstrated capacity to use the talent, to work the muscle, to close the deal. But you've had the revelation. You just don't have the reps. You got the revelation, but you hadn't had the reps, okay? And the reps are every single day working the muscle, making the ask. We have a guy in my office named Eric White. When he first came to me, uh, it literally, he would tell you that when we went to make sales calls, he would hide. We couldn't find a dude for like the first six months. He was scared to death to pick this phone up. And we actually work on in my office asking a simple question, which credit card would you like to put this on? Is, is there anything stopping you from doing it today? Coach can't help you to commit, but once you commit, he's not going to let you fail. Now, so where does that come from? It comes from reps, making 80 phone calls a day, getting told no, getting cussed out, getting hung up on, getting laughed at, getting ridiculed, whatever. I've had a revelation. Because of my revelation, I now have conviction. Okay, I'm 44 years old, guys. For 30, what is that, 38 years, I've had a conviction that a good coach can change your life. So, if, if, so when I call a person... I've already made up my mind. We're doing this today. When I call you today, you're making a decision to hire me as your coach when I call you. We're doing this today because I can't stand here and do justice to you by not asking you to let me be your coach, okay? Because I know the power of what can happen when I'm coaching you. That's a certainty. Where's the certainty come from? The revelation. Because of the revelation, I now have a conviction. Because of the conviction, I'm now willing to do whatever it takes. Now, which means get uncomfortable which means ask another person for something, which means the, the biggest deal I've ever closed uh, was, was almost a million dollar deal. And I walked in that day and said, guys, we're, I'm do, we're doing this today. First thing out of my mouth, I came to put a deal together. Is that what you want to do? Before, as soon as I walked in the room, that's what I said. I came here to put a deal together today. Are you ready to put a deal together? Okay. And they're like, yeah, that set the tone for the meeting, guys. We're, ta we're done talking. We're done flirting. We're done drawing up diagrams of how it's going to work. Now, I, I wrote in my notes while he was talking is that when I put that deal together, I, I, I basically said, here's your problem and here's your solution. Okay. They said when Nick Saban got the job at uh, LSU, they made a decision before they interviewed Saban at LSU that they were not going to hire him to be the head football coach at LSU. That was the decision they made. They get into the room. They walk into a room. Saban walks in with a notepad. And he had pages and pages of notes of this is why you can't recruit. This is why you, you're not winning championships. This is why you're not getting players graduated. That, right? And when I become the head football coach at LSU, this is what's going to happen. We're going to win a championship. And he was so compelling at his close during that meeting when they said they weren't going to hire him. One of the board of directors jumped up and said, Nick, we'd like for you to be our football coach. <laughs> How much is it going to cost? And then he said 1.8 million. And, and, and one guy said, let's, let's round it to two and get started tomorrow. So here's the point. He walked in and he did the medicine cabinet and the medicine cabinet close is here's your problem. And I actually know your problem better than you do. I've studied your problem. 
I've, I'm, a, I'm a master at solving your problem. There is nobody on planet earth who's better at solving your problem than I am. When you take action today and commit to me, this is what's about to happen right now. Okay, this is what's going to happen. I just can't do it. I can't turn the wheels. I can't make it happen. I can't help you go from here to there until you say yes. And once you say yes, all you're doing is, right, you're committing. Okay, you're committing to me. And when we're committed to each other, okay, I can't help you. Remember this, folks. I can't help you until you commit. But once you commit, I'm not going to let you fail. That's my favorite close of all time. Okay, look, I can't help you. I want to help you so bad I can't see straight. I'm on the phone with you. I've talked to you seven times. I've overcome every objection you have, right? I know you got fear. I know you got anxiety. I understand, but I can't help you until we bring these two things together, folks. And once you do, man, your world's going to change. And, and let me show you how many times it's changed for all these other people, okay? So when you're thinking about this, just remember when Cody's talking about conviction, where does conviction come from? It comes from revelation, because of the revelation, you now have a conviction. I want to replace the word aggressive with convicted. See, I'm not aggressive. I am aggressive, but I'm really convicted. I can be humble and, and, and convicted at the same time. So when people say, well, I don't need this. Well, I don't need that. Well, I've already got an insurance person. Well, I've already got a real estate agent. Well, I understand. On a scale of one to 10, how satisfied are you with that person? Right? Because most people are going to say, I'm not satisfied at all. Okay, what would it take for you to give me a shot at this? See, see where it gets uncomfortable, Cody, is, is when a person kind of says no and, and you keep going because it's kind of a fake no. It's kind of a like, right? Like, 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 like you're not serious. Like, listen, I'm a professional, okay? And a professional understands I've had a revelation. I've got a conviction. Now I'm willing to do whatever it takes. So there, there, is, a, a, there, is, a, there is a certainty that is transferred there. Now, where I see a lot of people, Cody, miss in, in the closing is in the follow-up. The, the law of diffusion tells me that for everybody I present an idea to, only 16% of people will be open and inviting to that idea the first time they see it. I think some people need to see an idea one to three times. Some people need to see it three to seven times. Some people need to see it seven to 15 times. So one of the things we'll get into on Friday is the difference between a linear touch and a nonlinear touch. And linear is direct. Okay, linear is like I come right at Brad Blazer and I say, look, man, I, have you seen enough to make a decision? Right. The word decision means the word decide means to kill off. Now, right now in this conversation, we're going to kill off. I remember an insurance guy. You probably coached him and he's on the phone and he's scared to death to make a decision to buy my coaching program. And he's, here's what he said. He said, I've let my wife down. I can't tell you how many times I've started something and failed. I can't tell you how many times I've tried to do something and quit. I can't tell. He said, my wife has completely lost faith in me. How can I give you this money, coach, and do this? And, and I said to him, this is a moment of truth. How long do you can let this cycle go on in your life? How many times are you going to let your wife down? How many times are you going to start and quit? How many times? I mean, maybe those other coaches would have let you quit, but you finally met somebody who will not let you quit. I'm not letting you quit. And, and if, I, if you don't make a decision to commit to this coaching program, th this cycle, we'll have this conversation 10 years from today. Now, now I can't help you till you commit. And the dude committed. He's like, you're right. Because here's the deal. What were we doing? Bringing this vicious cycle to an end, man. Do you know, do you know how many calls I've got from, from wives of, of husbands who said, thank you so much for helping my husband get himself together and finally follow through with something in his life? Because that's the hard conversation I got to have with a person. Now, if you don't have conviction, if you don't believe in your product and service, if I was selling insurance, here's what I would, here's what I would say when they tell me, let me think about it. I would say, look, there's a lot of things in life that are nice to have, but insurance is not one of them. Okay. There, there's a lot of things in life you can do without, but insurance is not one of them. Now, if you don't do this today. Okay, I, I could sit here and tell you story after story after story after story of people who didn't have insurance. And I had one of my certified coaches in Memphis, Tennessee, 42 years old, roll over a dead one day. Okay, and, 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 and the worst part about it was he didn't have any insurance. Okay, and, 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 and I saw what happened as a result of that and how sad it was that people were, people were arguing over this or that. And man, that's not what you want at the end of a person's life to be arguing over insurance and who's doing what and who's going to pay for the funeral and who's going to do that. These are stories that I have given the eulogy at two different funerals where, where, where there was nothing to say. I didn't have anything to say. So I've had all of the, 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 the tough 
the tough revelations in my life because I'm 44 years old, man. I, I'm telling you, if I was selling insurance, I'd be like, look, there's a lot of things you can wait till tomorrow. This ain't one of them. We need to take care of this today, mm -hmm. right now, while we're on the phone, before we go, because you don't ever want to be unprepared. Okay. That's conviction, folks. That's not being pushy. That's not being aggressive. That's the truth. That's the cold, hard truth. Okay. There's lots of things you can do without the insurance in one of them. And so you got to get to the point where you've had, the, I'm not selling the product. I'm selling a set of beliefs and convictions. Okay. And when we get into, when we get into Friday, we will talk about how to know within 15 seconds, if you have a legitimate prospect or not. See, the first time I met Cody, I have a filter I use. I, okay. And I'm looking for a certain type of person. Now, here's what's interesting. When I'm, when I'm looking for that person, guess what? Those are the kind of people I find. Those are the kind of people I find. So if you're out there and you're watching this, if you have not had the revelation and you do not have the conviction, when push comes to shove and people push you back or they tell you they need to wait and think about it, you'll just say, okay, and you'll do a lot of sales. So just call me when you're ready. I just say, man, every second we waste is a second we can't get back. Okay, we lose 10% of momentum every day we don't take action. Okay, I, I, here, here's another example, Cody, then we'll come back to you. I lost 30 pounds from November of last year to this year. I'm at, at my Floyd Mayweather weight. Do you know how many times I went to the gym and trainers would say to me, you got to get your nutrition right. And nutrition's a real important part of this. And they kind of flirted with it. I really wish a trainer would have set my butt down and said, look, you cannot outwork a bad diet. If you don't get your diet right today, then I don't care how many times you come to the gym, you're not going to lose any weight. You're not going to get in any better shape. But no trainer ever said that to me, Cody. They never put it to me that hard. They just suggested, get your diet right. Because I, I would go to the weight room and, and I, would, I would get a little bit stronger, but, but I never lost any weight. I never got to my ideal weight. They should have sat me down and said, look, I'm closing you right now. We're going to get your nutrition right. And I'm not even going to train you until you get serious about this. Because, because this is important. See, now I, I kind of regret that I wasted all that time with people suggesting things to me when they should have sat down and closed me, man. And I'd have been grateful that they closed me because I would have lost the weight and been in the best shape of my life uh, several years earlier. And that's how convicted, like I tell a person, Cody, I can't, man, if you put off this decision, we can have this talk today, Cody, or we could have it. I told you about your book. Cody's writing a book right now. I said, man, we can, we can talk about this book today or we can talk about it a year from today. But the book ain't magically going to happen. Like, like until you make this decision, you are a person of interest. You need a book. Let us help you write the book, right? And, and you said, you're right. I need to do this. Because it's not something, it's not a suggestion. It's like, man, if you're going to go to this level, man, everybody who's at that level has got a book. You got to get one. So, so why, don't, why would we wait on this? So that's how much conviction I have, guys. And I, and I see people all the time that don't have that conviction. They have not had a revelation. Therefore, they're selling what, Cody? A product. They're just selling a product they don't even have any conviction about. And I can sense it, man. I can smell it. I can, I can, I can smell it. And it's like, man, you don't believe in this. You're trying to sell something to me. You don't even believe in. Okay. Because so that's, so if you hadn't gone through that cycle, to Cody's point, you're not going to sell with certainty. Now, when you add the care, Cody and I have been exposed to some of the top people in the world. And what we've noticed is how good they are one-to-one -one with people. The key to the many is to the one. And every time I'm talking to a person, whether they've spent $9 with me on a book or, or 90,000 with me, okay? They're a person. They got dreams and hopes and fears and anxieties. And until they sense that authenticity in you, okay? And, and, and they sense it's not fake, it's real. You really care about them. You're really trying to help solve their problem. You're not gonna close a lot of people, folks because it's gonna be seen as a gimmick. Lots of people teach sales technique, okay? And that those are uh, personality ethic things where you try to make people feel good. But but you, you, the, the real solution to this is actually care about the people you're helping. <laughs> and if you care about the people you're helping, you're gonna help a lot of people, folks. Yes, you will. So let's talk about the transfer, Cody, at the end, because, yep. okay, so let's say, I'm in your pipeline and I indicate interest in your services. And I think it's got to be simple, uh, invaluable, aligned, and a priority. Okay, everybody's got to understand what I just said. Okay, when you try to sell to big time people, sophisticated people, if it's not simple, see, some people try to sell me things, I'm like, it's so complicated. Ah, it's so much friction. It's so hard to do business with them. 
It's not invaluable. It's like, I don't know if I need that or not. Like, help me to understand what, why we got that person. Okay, it's not aligned. This is big. This is why I always ask when I'm trying to close the person, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to do? Okay, uh, well, I'm trying to do this, this. Okay, good. Here's, here's what I think you should do to get there, okay? Then it's gotta be a priority, okay? This is important, we gotta do it right now. So let's say I'm in your pipeline, um, Cody, and I've indicated interest. Let's say you've gone seven touches and it's closing time, okay? And, and you, you come right at me with a linear touch. So there's linear, direct. Direct is I, I've come right at you. I'm not letting you out, all right? It's like Venus flytrap. Right. Indirect is where Cody, I'm going to send you some information. I'm going to send this video. I'm going to write like linear, boom, nonlinear, indirect. Okay. What would be some of your linear touches to get me across the finish line? Yeah. Well, one of the big things that we do um, is uh, that's worked really well is uh, following up through video text even, even if like, if our, like if our team's following up, they're having trouble, get somebody back on the phone, right? I'll shoot them a text. Hey, it's Cody. Call me, you know, and then I'll wait a few minutes and I'll FaceTime them. Um, right. But, but what, what's the point of all that? Right. It's, it's, it's unique. It's creative. It stands out, you know, and, 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 and in, in, in our world today, I really believe it's, it's, it's a lot of, it's all about attention. Yeah. You know, like people are busy, you know, you, you want, you want to get coaches attention. You know, like the dude's so freaking busy. He's doing, he's, he's, he's flying to Vegas and back and everything else. Right. It's going to take more than an email probably, you know, like you, you've, you've got to get creative and go the extra mile, which goes back to, Hey, if you believe in what you're selling, then you will, you know, like I really believe from a sales standpoint, um, there's three things that you have to have that I feel like I have to have before I'm ready to tell them that we're doing this today. And, 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 and that is the relationship piece. Right. I have to show my care. You got to get to know them along the way, build some rapport, find some common ground, know, like, and trust, et cetera. Right. So relationship. Second is value. They've got to see value in what I'm offering. Okay. I have to have built the value along the way. They need, they, they have to need what I want and they have to want what I, what I have. Right. So value. And then third is the engagement piece. Far too many salespeople talk. They have the gift of gab, right. Which, which isn't good. And they end up talking so much they never ask the client questions. They talk past their questions. They ask multiple questions in a row. They confuse people. And before you know it, they've talked more than the prospect have. And in, in every cell I make, the prospect talks more than I do. I'm asking questions. I'm leading the conversation. I'm asking questions. They are talking more than me. They're telling me why they're going to be doing business with me. They're telling me everything I need to know. They're telling me all their problems, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And that is creating engagement. So one of the things I do to create engagement at the end of a sale, it, when I'm ready to move forward, is to use a series of trial closes, a series of small positive questions that end with the word yes, 100 percent of the time to get them used to moving in my direction. Right. Because if you think about it in a, in a sales process, um, you're on this end, they're on this end and you're not going to get them here in, a, in, in eight seconds. When you just met, when you just knocked on their door asking them for 80 grand, right? But over time, you can get them there. You know, like I remember specifically going to a home in Springfield, Missouri, coach, and, and, and there was this elderly couple that told me, hey, um, if, if, if you're here to sell, uh, sell us life insurance, it's not going to happen. Like I literally walked in the door, right? And I'm like, okay, this is going to be fun. Well, then a, a few minutes later, they're like, okay, the last insurance agent that was here last week didn't close us. And it's because he said that he needs our bank account information. And I want to go ahead and tell you up front, coach, that um, no one, well, we had a problem with our bank 40 years ago, and we've never given our bank account information out to anyone ever since. And I'm thinking, well, well, what about like, you know, water, sewer, trash, the city, et cetera? Like, no, no one has their bank account information, routing an account number, none of it. We, we, we've never given it out in 40 years, and no one takes money out of it ever. I'm like, okay, this is, this, this is going to be a good one, man. This is going to be a story to tell, right? Like that's, that's what's going through my mind. I'm remaining confident. Well, I don't immediately say, well, I have to have bank information to do business with you, right? I don't because it's a little combative, right? It's a little disagreeable. I need to be agreeable along the way. I need to keep engagement up. I need to keep trial closing, right? And so I knew that, at, that, that over time, I could eventually get them 
to do business with me. So what I did was something that I like to call a, a leap of faith, trial close. And what I did, and I got a slew of these we're going to go through on Friday, by the way. But the leap of faith is um, when I'm talking to someone, it's, it's, it's uh, hey, 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 Joe and Betty, let's just imagine, right, in this, in this perfect world that we do business together. We've been doing business together for years, and we've been happy, and everything's been great, and your policy's perfect. Everything you wanted to happen happened, ha happened exactly at the right time, on the right date. There was never any errors. There was never any problems. Everything was mistake-free, and we're living in this perfect fairy tale world where, holy freak, everything is amazing. I'm assuming that if that were to be true and everything was perfect, right? you'd probably be slightly open to doing things outside of the norm. Is that true? Is that fair enough? Am I right? Yeah, maybe so, right? So I'm slowly getting them to move. Well, 45, 60, 75 minutes later, the couple that's never given out their check-in and check account number and, 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 and writing number and account number in 40 years gives it to a 23 or 24-year-old that they never met an hour and a half ago that leaves charges their bank account every month for life insurance and has been doing it for probably seven years now. Why? Because I was certain and committed that it was going to happen, number one. And number two, I wasn't combative. I wasn't disagreeable. I was agreeable along the way. I used small trial closes to get them to move, right? So a lot of the things that I like to do um, when I'm selling life insurance specifically is, you know, hey, um, Miss Betty, we've seen there's a lot of policies out there that, um, you know, the, the price goes up a lot, maybe every six months, maybe every year, maybe every few years, maybe when you turn 65, maybe when you turn 80, I'm assuming that you would like something to where the price never changes. Is that true? Yes. I'm, so, so that's important to you. Yes. Okay, good. Right. That's an example of a couple trial closes. And then literally I've, I, I, I'll get them saying yes, 10, 15 times. I'm creating high levels of engagement. I'm increasing the value. I'm increasing the relationship in general. And then by the end, but I'm like, okay, here's what we're going to do. I, I don't even ask anymore, by the way. No, I don't say, what do you think? Are you interested? Do you want to do this? What do you want to do now? Like all of those are, 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 are doubt creating questions that put the control in the consumer's hands, which isn't good. Instead, now I'm telling them based on what you said, here's the solution. Here's what we're going to do. Here's how we're going to do it. Here's the next steps. Let's do it now. Um, the, the, at, at that point, it is completely sold. Now, when you're thinking about it, let, let's go back and let's let's recap some of these. Because to me, let's go back to the concept. What are we trying to do? Money exchanges hands when a problem is solved. No. Some people don't even know what their problems are. So you enlighten them. That means to shine light on darkness. And, and the medicine cabinet says it is a prescription. It's your problem. It's our solution. Now, they're naturally going to put up some objection. And what does the word objection mean? Opposition of thought. Okay. And, and because of the way the brain is wired, they move into a defensive posture. Okay. Especially if they think they're being sold something they don't want. Okay. So, so which is, which is why you have to have the authenticity. You got to care about this person. They got to feel like they can relax. Okay. Now we'll get into this some on Friday, but I, I studied the different personality profiles and part of understanding the disc profile is communicating with the person the way they would like to be communicated with. For example, high D personalities like options, okay? Option A, B, or C. So if you're selling to a guy like me, it's not one option. It's like, hey, here's, I'd like to get, I'd like to present three different options to you. You may sit down with me and say, coach, I know you're a person of action and I don't want to waste a lot of your time. Here it seems to be your problem. Here seems to be my solution. Here are three options for you to take advantage of. Which of the three would you like to uh, be interested in? Okay, now I may say, Okay, this is a little confusing. Help me to understand. It may take you follow up, which is why I wrote the book Million Dollar Follow Up, seven to fifteen touches. Now, you may be confused about the difference between linear and nonlinear. Linear is direct. It's like boxing. When you're closing, it's a direct boom. Cody, have you seen enough to make a decision? If I could help you, like I've helped these other people, what would stop us from moving forward? Okay, what would prohibit you from signing it right now? Okay, I can't help you till you commit, but once you commit, man, I'm not gonna let you fail. Cody, we lose 10% of momentum every day we don't take action. And let me ask you a question. Have you ever been on the wrong side of momentum? Okay, now, 
These are closes that I use when a person is what I call in the red zone. And the red zone is Cody. Cody has gone through the sales cycle. I've explained my value. He's indicated interest in my product or service. I have 100% certainty I can help him, but he is stuck on something. Okay. Now, there's only two reasons a person doesn't close fear and uncertainty. Fear is an unpleasant emotion created by a belief that something's going to harm me. What could be harming? Why wouldn't I give Cody my money to go to 8% nation? There's only one reason. I've gone to conferences and did get my money's worth. I don't think I can reproduce the money. I don't know if I want to travel for whatever reason. I'm scared to death to go anywhere, right? I've never been to a conference before. These are all fears, folks. These are all fears, okay? C Cody, if Cody says, look, Coach Burke came to this conference. He went back and generated $500,000 or more sales. I'd be happy to put you on the phone with him right now or 100 Coach Burks for that matter. Right. Because that's how much confidence we have. Look, and then he could say, look, I know how you feel, man. I was scared to death. Now, this is something I learned from my buddy Cardone. I was I was complaining to him because I had spent fifty thousand dollars to buy a suite at his conference and uh, and and, and to, to use this. And I and I was talking and I, and I just dropped kind of this man's fifty thousand bucks. And he taught me a valuable lesson about closing because he completely shifted the conversation. He's like fifty thousand. Man, I spent $5 million. Like, we're sitting here talking about $50,000 when I spent $5 million, okay? And what he did, I thought was interesting, is he compared the numbers, right? Like, you're sitting here whining about $50,000. I just dropped $5 million. So, so it kind of shut down my objection pretty quickly. He also taught me a valuable lesson about not letting the prospect confuse things. Now, let me give you an example. You call into my office. And, and I, people do this to me all the time. Oh, Coach Bird and I are, you know, we're trying to close a person on this. Okay. We're trying to close a person on, 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 let's say Cody on doing a publishing deal with me where we write his book. Cody starts bringing all this other stuff in. Well, I know Coach Bird and I are going to do some different things in 2021 and all this. And, and, and there's a confusion there. And Cardone taught me this. Don't let prospects confuse the sales cycle. What you have to do to close a person is separate these things out. So I would teach my salespeople to say to Cody, I understand Coach Bird does want to do those things with you in 2021, but we're not talking about that right now. We're only talking about this one thing, which is helping you write your book. And I can't tell you how many times I've listened to Eric on my team, people try to confuse the sales cycle. Oh, I'm thinking about doing this, but I want to do this. And I've taught Eric to say, look, we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about getting you in Coach Bird's coaching program, Monster Producer. What you're talking about is another conversation. Because, because people will confuse this, right? They'll, they'll, like, and it's hard to close a person when there's confusion in a sales cycle. Oh, well, last year, the insurance agent screwed me over, right? Well, we're not talking about that. We're not talking about that insurance agent that screwed you over. We're talking about me helping you right here. I do not let people bring these confusions in. A confusion is a problem that appears to have no solution to it. And, and people will say, oh, I mean, th they, this person screwed me and that person didn't help me and this person, and man, I heard this and hey, I understand, but let's bring the conversation back to this right here. What we're talking about today is this problem and this solution, okay? And some of you allow the prospect to control the whole conversation. And that's that would be an amateur move. The professional says, let's keep our eye on the ball. Let's stay focused right here. Even if you have customer problems, keep, keep them focused on this. Not that, not the past, not the future. What if it don't work? Well, what if it does work? Okay, I could show you a hundred times that it's worked over and over and over. So, so if it worked for them, I think it would work from you. Let's go ahead and get you started today. So the last piece I would tell you here is um, a lot of you are, are selling things, but you have so much more to offer the prospect in, a, in what I would call a value stack to close them. And we don't lower the price, but we do offer more value. And the way you offer value is you start to understand all of the things you're giving the prospect and you start saying it like that. When you take action today, I'm going to give you a Monday call with me every week. I'm going to give you my 28 years of experiences. I'm going to give you right access to my team. I'm going to give you a Tuesday, Thursday rhythm. I'm going to give you, man, when you take action today, look at all the things I'm going to give you when you take action with me. OK, and you need to start saying that because many of you are giving so many things to the prospect and in their mind, price is only a problem when in the absence of value. So I try to stack the value where it's so frigging ridiculous, 
Like spending three or four hours with Cody and I on Friday for 97 bucks is ridiculous. We're going to give you our X number of years of experience. We're going to give you all the access we've had to all the big time people. Cody and I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on being coached by some of the top people in the world. We've had exposure to some of the best. We're going to give that to you on Friday when we do the virtual summit. So if you're on here and you're thinking like this, I need my prey drive reactivated, okay, to finish the year strong. I don't have consistency in my sales cycle, okay? I don't have the direction and guidance that I need. I, I don't have the confidence that I need. I would like to know in the first 15 seconds if I have a legitimate prospect, okay? I'm going to I'm gonna break down on Friday at the strategic uh, selling simplified. That's three S's. It's hard, hard to remember, okay? Strategic selling simplified. I'm going to teach you how I personally attack a day every day, how I focus on nothing but new money every day. And you say, well, how's that working? Uh, we did 1.3 million in sales in October. We did almost 600,000 in sales in November. That's almost $2 million in the last two months, uh, folks. And it's, it's a direct result of the selling system that I'm gonna be teaching on Friday. How I attack every day, how do I explain my services at a high level, how do I work a hit list, a farm club, a top 25, net promoters, connectors, database, social media, and how I follow up? Uh, that's what we're going to be focusing on on Friday. And Cody, tell them what you're going to be focusing on because, folks, I'm telling you, this is a great way to finish December. So many people are going to limp across the finish line, man. It drives me crazy. You push this freaking hard and you get to December and you let the world you let the news, I haven't watched the news, folks, in the last at least 21 to 30 days. I don't know what's going on in the world. I don't want to know what's going on in the world, by the way. I got to keep my head down and keep helping thousands of people. That's my mission. So, Cody, tell them what you're going to cover on Friday, because we want we want to get several hundred people on this thing on Friday. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm, going, to be, I'm going to be covering um, initial rapport building, right, early in the sales cycle. Uh, my four-step sales process. Uh, for for in home and virtual, by the way, uh, twelve step follow up for following up with customers so that you can end up getting the deal done right with some super creative ideas for follow up that we're going to go over. Also, some some ways to master the phone. A lot of phone sales tips. I believe that literally the first ninety five percent of salespeople totally butcher the first fifteen to twenty seconds of a call. And, and, and there's specifically some things you're probably doing right now that are mistakes that you don't even know that I will make sure that we get straight out on Friday, by the way. Um, my three-step objection handling process, I'm going to break down objections and why I'm a master when it comes to objections early in the sales process, especially, right? Five-step referral system, world-class closing phrases, um, and going to continue to dive into not only the sales process entirely, but specifically the end of the sales process so that when we get to the end of the sale, you close deals at an extremely high level. So mm -hmm. you never lose sales again that you should be getting. Yeah. Well, think about all the stuff. You, you know, there was a question here as you were talking about that. Can, can you use fear? Folks, I, I, I believe that that fear of loss is powerful and it's true. Like if you don't take action, you are losing something. You're losing momentum. You're losing an opportunity. People are more afraid of what, the, what they're going to lose than what they're going to gain. Okay. And that is an activator of prey drive. So we will get into that as well when it comes to Friday. But what we want to give you tonight was we wanted to show you, I call it, let you taste the ice cream. Tonight was kind of getting in the mindset, getting kind of gearing you up, stretching yourself out, warming yourself up for Friday's virtual boot camp. It's a great way to finish the year. Get your team on it. Get your whole insurance company on it. Folks, this is, if, you, if you're trying to activate the prey drive in your people on selling to get across the finish line and start 2021 right, this is, this is what you need to be on on Friday. We're going to give you our best effort. We're going to be there for you. We're going to give you uh, everything that we've got on Friday. Selling and closing made simple. That's the concept. Selling seems complicated to a lot of people. We want to codify it. Okay, and I've written about this in books, Legacy Selling, Million Dollar Follow-Up, Person of Interest. Uh, my new drive on Prey Drive, my new book on Prey Drive is coming out next year. I'm about to sign a major deal with the major publisher on that book. So listen, we believe we can help you. And Cody, I'll end by asking a question that Cody asked in the beginning. Do you believe that your 2021 will be better if you know what we teach you 
and we break down and make selling simple. And if you believe that, then would you be willing to invest $97 in yourself? You're not investing in us, folks. Okay. You're not investing in us. You're, you're going to, you're investing in, in you. Okay. And I always tell people, if you want to invest 97 bucks, you, we don't even talk about 97,000. We don't even talk about 977,000. We sure don't even talk about 9.7 million. Okay. Is, is if you want to invest 97 bucks, you ain't serious about your career. Okay. So, so we're here to help you. Let's go ahead and get you signed up. If you're signing up for this weekend, give us, I'm in, tell us. Okay. Robert, Carol, sign, seal, deliver. Come on, baby. Oh. Let's go. I may get out and run some wind sprints tonight. There we go. Phil Chaney's in. Mateo, what's up? I'm in. Michael, I'm in. John Hart, thank you. Oh. Um, Jason Thompson, look at that. Brad Blazer, come on, Brad. Jimmy, Tom, Drew. Buy them tickets, folks. Love it. Because I'm telling you, spending three hours with us, man. We'll send you the replay if you can't get it. Nicole Jenkins, thank you. Come on, folks. Definitely in. Zach Price. Come on now. The event on Friday starts at 10. Okay, 10 o'clock. We will have a replay. Courtside, Tom Gavin. Come on, Tom. I'm going to go out and run some wind sprints tonight. That's right. And, Michael, it is it is totally different because you, won't, you don't get coach on, 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 on Saturday, right? So you get you get coach and I on Friday. That's right. And I'm, I'm going to start using the, the word codified more just, you know, with, with, with a name like Cody, you know, you know codify, that's, I like that, man. You, you got me thinking tonight. That's right. You're not investing in me. You're investing in you folks. Okay. Ethan, good, good. I'm excited too. So if you're on here, guys, take action tonight. Goodness gracious. Get it for your teams. Yeah. Sign your wife up. Thank you, Michael. Sign every, sign your kids up, man. I'm going to go in there and sign my five-month-old son up. He don't even know it. Okay. If he uh, don't know how to close something by the time he's 10 years old, something's bad wrong. He ain't paying attention. Amen. That's the truth. I know my daughter can close. She's eight years old. Hmm. Okay, so so thank you guys tonight, Cody. Thank you for joining me on a Sunday night to talk about closing. Um, you're doing big things in the world. I think you've been a great model for for uh, for your generation to to have the guts to take action. I saw your Christmas party last night. That looked awesome. So you, you're building a real company. I'm proud of you, and uh, been, just been proud to be part of your life in some small way. We're gonna do big things together in 2021, and, and uh, you know, 8%, 1%, don't matter, folks. We're going to show up, we're going to grow up, and we're going to deliver. So, God oh. bless you tonight. Take action, folks. Sign up for the boot camp, okay? Oh, let's do it. You guys, thanks a million. You guys have a great night. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for your coach. Thank you, buddy. Absolutely. Thank you. Let's go. See you guys Friday. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one. You're going to love it. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. Not just known in your market. Some of you are still playing too small. You're thinking, how do I go back and dominate my local market? What you need to be thinking about is how do I dominate planet Earth? That's your market. It's not your local market. So when you're thinking about this concept of, of being a person of interest, here, here's...